and welcome to Let's Fly VFR. 11.40 Beta 3, although it's only out as Beta 1 for the public, this has got a couple of new inclusions from the original Beta 1 that we saw, if you happen to catch that, from last week when uh, Austin was introducing us to all the new toys he'd programmed. So there's a couple of things we're going to look at here today. And we've got the, the beautiful Robin, which is one of my favourites. And we're back at my home airport at Gawler in South Australia. Now, what we're looking at here, there's three things we want to look at. The reaction of the thrust from the prop when we go to power. Because previously it's been sort of instantaneous. You can see that it just drags a little bit before it starts to go and starts to get that uh, that thrust happening. It takes a little time for, it, for the prop to compress that air before it gets going. And that seems to be modelled really nicely. So I think that's tick one off to uh, Lemon Research for the work on that one. That's, that's worked really well. Now step two is stalling. Now, normally with a stall in X-Plane 11, the aircraft just drops quite lazily down or it just wallows in the air and doesn't do anything. But uh, Austin has prog programmed in the wing drop that uh, is quite common with most aircraft. Some of the training aircraft, like the Jabiru, which I've flown, does not tend to do that so much, but it seems to be a common trait with a lot of aircraft out there. So... What we're going to do is we'll fly out of uh, Gawler, out over the um, local countryside. And this is the, normally the training area. We don't tend to fly over Gawler itself. Um, the guys in Gawler don't particularly like us flying right over the top of them all the time. So we'll head out into the country um, with the beautiful Barossa Valley, which is those hills over to the right. So if you want some plonk, you can head over there. There's some really nice wine. So... We'll get out and we'll keep away from uh, from Gawler and from Sandy Creek, which is up to the right a little bit there. But the weather is uh, real world weather and it has uh, we have a bit of a cloud a bit of cloud around happening at the moment. Although as I do this, it's uh, it is night time. Um, the cloud is out there. We have a full moon, so there is a bit around. And once we get close to it, uh, I'm pretty impressed with how it uh, how well it looks considering these all default price. I still cannot, uh, I'm not convinced that I need to go out and pay money for for clouds. I just can't do it. So, we're going to cruise out here. We're getting a little bit of altitude, so we need to be safe. Then we're going to do a clearing turn. And then we're going to do a couple of stalls and just see how well this works. It's all uh, ortho for XP. Um, scenery guys, zoom level 17 probably as we cruise out uh, towards the hills. And we're getting a bit of altitude now, I think we're, uh, we're approaching a safe area. We're getting a little bit close to those clouds though, and uh, I'm scared of clouds, I don't like running into them. So we'll turn around and look for a little bit of clean air. And, uh, yeah, we sort of got that cloud lay, and you can see the um, shadows on the uh, on the ground as well, which is pretty good. It's looking pretty realistic, I would say. And I really do like flying this Robin. Around. I hope you like my little Let's Fly bit of uh, colours to it. It's maybe a little bit gorish, but it does the job. So we're going to head around and. Uh, give this a bit of a go i'm really looking forward to this if you've watched many of my videos um, and i go out on, on the test flight videos particularly i like to see how the aircraft handle when they're low and slow or high and slow and how well they stall we have found uh most to be pretty good but the aero light 103 is a death trap at least in x plane uh, i have not yet survived it i've hit the ground underneath where we are a number of times not being able to recover. So, let's give this a go. Powering off. Just going to hold the nose up. I'm going to do anything too dramatic and just let the aircraft come into its own gentle stall. Okay, holding it up, got a fair nose. Now remember, stalling is not necessarily a factor of speed, it's angle of attack just getting there at the moment and there we go we get a left wing drop on that one 
that's something you didn't get before when I've flown this. Normally it just sort of wallows around and then it may be a little fall down or it'll just sink. So that, uh, that seems really a lot more realistic than what you would expect with most GA aeroplanes tend to drop a wing, even if it's just a little. So let's do it again. Holding that nose up as we fly past. And there it goes. See, there goes the right wing on that one. So it dropped a left the first time, dropped a right wing on the second time. And then we're going to cruise out and recover. So power back up. And head back out again. So that's pretty much confirmed. Really happy with that. Um, that's two parts that I think um, we can tick off comfortably. Now I'm just trying this with a little bit of um, flap. And uh, we've got full flap there. And just going to see how this handles. See if it... Uh, plays up too much for me. I did did actually stop and center the joystick in this because it seemed to be a little bit uncentered. But yeah, it's just dropping that wing again. It's uh, it's the rate it, the way it did that with the flaps was a little bit different from uh, and a little slower. It didn't sort of just fall away. It rolled and gave itself up to that right wing, which is pretty interesting again. So let's head back and look at part three of uh, what Austin did. Oh no, well, let's do another one. Let's do another one. I should try spinning in it as well. That's, that's always something that's worth testing out. So there's the right wing gone. Uh, there's some right rudder there just to see what goes. And we started a little, there's one rotation and then back out. Okay, that's all pretty good, so I'm happy with that. Again, I think we should, uh, at this point, head back to the airport and try what is the last part, and I think the most challenging part probably of all of this, and that is the the rate of crosswind effect on the aircraft, which is something that uh, Austin spent a lot of time talking about on his most recent video, and I'm not 100% convinced it's going to we're going to feel it that as the way he explained it. Now, if you didn't see the video, the way he explained it was the air, the crosswind air is measured at a particular height, which is normally where the, um, air, the, the wind socks are at that altitude. So, you know, it might be five, four or five meters up is where it's measured. I think in the video he's mentioning 10 meters, but I don't think 10 meters is uh, as high as I've seen any other. Um, wind socks go around they certainly aren't that big at Gawler so we'll head back and have a look and you can see the you will see the head so the air sock or the wind sock uh, operating and you can see the the wind blowing the the dust and dirt when we get back there and I've got it set pretty high well into the 20 knot cross wind from uh, about this is from north the first one that we're going to do here so it's a little bit off to the left. It's about a 45 degree crosswind. So if you're not, again, if you're not familiar, if you've got a, if you stated that you have a 10 knot or 20 knot crosswind in this case, for example, uh, but it's not immediately at your nine o'clock, your three or six line, I'm sure you're aware, coming directly from the wind side at you, uh, then it loses its effectiveness to a point. It's at 45 degrees forward it's about half of what you uh, what's public so if it's 20 knots you're probably getting a 10 knot crosswind factor if it's at 45 degrees to you uh, either from the back or the front I guess but let's head back over the scenery and uh, get back and give this a little try so there's the runway we're heading uh, across and then we're going to line up as I uh, have done many times over those little you can see those uh, buildings to the right of that road. Some signal by themselves. There are a couple of uh, greenhouses, sort of plastic houses as they are here in, in South Australia. You can see them there just sitting by themselves. There's a pair of them, one up the other. So they're basically the line that don't fly outside that of where she hit the military airspace. And people grumble at you in the real world it is too, so we're going to head back through here, line up, and we'll head down the downwind, and we're joining the downwind leg of the flight, so we'll continue on down here, 
So we've just got it paused for a moment. And we will continue on there down. Just because I went out there and just checked the wind uh, on that. So we'll head down the downwind. And then the runway should be about halfway down the wind, I would suggest. On a high wind aircraft like the Cessna, it'll be halfway down the strut. But if you're looking out, well in this case, it's about a third of the way uh, along the wind. But the wind that gives you a good, the correct spacing. We've got runway 1331 there, just as going under our nose. It's one of the most convenient runways because you can taxi out and just straight onto it on the way. It's pretty good. So we go a little bit further. So we're getting, once you get to about 45 degrees past, as you look back over your shoulder, powering back, doing the pre landing checks, flaps down first stage. Now, with a lot of wind around, it's, sometimes it's it's worth leaving it just at the one level of flap and not going to full flap because it, that just gives it more to uh, to act on. All right, we're in about the right place, so we'll roll left and we will come in. Now, at this situation, we were running at a, probably I think it was just 20 knots, and it was coming from north again. So this is zero five. 050 so this is this runway runs at 50 degrees from the other end and from 230 at the, at the opposite end. And this will be uh, an approach to 05. It's descending down and the Use power for your descent rate and pitch for your speed. If you like the other version, if you're aware of the other version, then uh, it's okay, that's your choice. That's what I particularly use. I don't know what I'm talking about over video on landings. You'll find one of my older videos on the, the landing instructions and flying instruction. Uh, have a look in there and I'll explain it to you about the the two different main approaching um, theories that, that pilots have to land in. We'll leave that alone for now, so we put the nose down. Now the wind's coming from the right because we're pointing into it. It's pretty easy to tell where the wind's coming from. So we're going to keep our approach, try and keep Caution, steady. Caution, so you can see it's not massive. The, the more amount of crosswind, the more turn away from the direction you want to be, you'll have. So. Not doing too bad. Now the change. The question is, does it change? If it change, then I would all of a sudden start moving across, or not? Is the case that? And, and there I've just lined myself up, so I didn't see any real difference in that. I don't know whether we're going to see that um, in a in a normal flight. So I, I think that's probably enough, guys. I, I think we've we've tested it out sufficiently, so we've done. The prop, uh, prop thrust, and and how quickly that takes in as it compresses. We've had a look at stalls, and we've had a look at uh, the crosswind effect, which I think maybe it's it's not as good as as I would hope. So until next time, I'll see you back in Let's Fly VFR. Feel free to visit let'sflyvfr.com, and I'll catch you for another flight back here again in the near future. Don't forget to subscribe. Catch you then. Bye-bye.